So my name is Antonio Bianchi. I'm a PhD candidate at uh, University of California, Santa Barbara. And this work has been done in collaboration with other researchers at uh, uh, Georgia Tech, UCSB, and the Eurocom. So <clears throat> we all know that uh, username and password authentication uh, is problematic, especially on mobile devices where inserting a lot of, like inserting a long password uh, might be complicated, and remembering new password for every app may be even harder. So uh, developers and, and users always want uh, more usable solutions. And there are many alternatives. And one possibility is to use, actually, in modern devices, the fingerprint uh, uh, reader sensor as a part of your authentication schema. So, uh, so if, we, if you look at a browser, so in, in browsers, kind of the, 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 the current state of the art is to use a, a two-factor authentication. And in particular, there is a standard called universal two-factor in which you have an external device. And this device contains a, a cryptographic key that can be used to sign the intention of the user. It can be used to sign, for instance, I want to pay my friend uh, $100. And so this key cannot just be used, but it needs to be unlocked by the user pressing this tiny uh, button on this physical device. And then the key is unlocked, and the key can be used to to sign uh, transactions, uh, kind of confirming the intention of a user. So can we have the same on mobile devices? And actually, we do. We can have the, something very similar, in particular using, at least in theory, using the fingerprint API in, uh, in Android devices. However, I will show you many apps don't use this API in, the, in a strong way. They use it incorrectly. And this will be the main topic of my uh, presentation. And if we look a little bit more in details about this, so modern devices have hardware capabilities to implement something similar to universal two-factor. And the proper usage of these uh, technologies could even defend against uh, root attackers. That in Android uh, means uh, an attacker that is able to completely compromise the, the operating system that in Android is, is Linux-based. So in particular, we have Trazon that can be used to uh, implement a trusted execution environment. The, this task execution, execution environment can store and use cryptographic keys. And these keys are not exportable because are inside Trazon. And they can be locked in the sense that they can only be, can, these keys can be set up in a way that can, can only be used uh, if the user uh, touches the, uh, the sensor. And at the same time, we have the fingerprint written sensors. And this sensor communicates directly with Trazon. And by touching the sensor with a registered fingerprint, uh, a key and, and a cryptographic key is unlocked. So in this work, I systematically study uh, the fingerprint API in Android, in Android and how it is used by apps. And I, I show how different usages can be exploited. And then I develop an, an automatic analysis tool based on static analysis to detect actually how apps uh, use this API. And finally, I identify some weaknesses of the current API and propose some improvements. So, yeah, just to clarify, we focus on the Google's implementation of this API, and on, that is actually, uh, the, actually developers can use it on Google's devices such as uh, Nexus and Pixel devices. Also, we do not consider physical layer attacks like the possibility of forging uh, fake fingerprints, even though this is actually a possibility. And we assume that the code running in Trazon is not compromised. Whereas the code running, the, the operating system code might be uh, compromised. So I'm going to give you examples of different ways in which apps are actually using these APIs. And for instance, the, the first uh, example is what we classify, what we define as weak usage. So in this case, we have a user. The user wants to pay uh, his friends, Chris, $10. So the user inserts this in, a, in an app. The app is gonna wait, is gonna ask to Trazon to just wait for the fingerprint touch. So then the user touches the sensor. Trazon is gonna send a message back to the app, uh, saying that okay, the user touched the sensor, and the app is gonna then send uh, a message to the back end, and the back end is gonna perform this transaction. And if you have something like this, if an attacker has a root capabilities, an attacker can easily just send a message to the back end saying, okay, I want to pay attacker ten dollars. So another usage that I define as, we define as decryption is basically when, um, it's a little bit different. So here, uh, the backend is asking for an authentication cookie. 
And this authentication cookie is encrypted. And the only way to actually decrypt this authentication cookie is to use a cryptographic key that is stored uh, inside Trasm. So this key is locked. So the only way to be used is having the user touching the sensor. And um, uh, when the key is unlocked, the uh, authentication cookie is decrypted, is sent back to the app. The app is sending this authentication cookie to the back end, and the transaction is performed. So in this case, if you have an attacker, so the attacker, what, what the attacker could do is, one, uh, after the authentication cookie has been decrypted once, the attacker could just um, steal this cookie, store it somewhere, and then uh, communicate with the back and says, OK, I want to pay the attacker $10, and this is the authentication cookie. So the best way to use this API is what uh, we define it as, as a sign. So in this case, uh, again, the user wants to pay Chris $10. The, the back end, uh, now the back end wants a, basically a signature of the transaction. So the back end wants to um, ask to the app, OK, but you need to sign the pay Chris $10 transaction. So now to sign this transaction, a key inside Trazon is needed. The key is unlocked by the user touching the sensor. Then the transaction is signed, is sent back to the backend. And in this case, the backend can verify the signature of this transaction using a public key that was sent to the backend the first time the app was used. And so in this case, an attacker cannot just arbitrarily uh, sign transactions without having the user uh, touching the sensor. So like to, to recap, uh, if it's a weak implementation, if, uh, assuming that an attacker has root, if it's a weak implementation, the attacker can completely bypass the usage of the fingerprint API. If it's decryption, the attacker can bypass after the authentication cookie has been decrypted once. If it's signed, is this the safest way? But still, some attacks are possible. And I will, I will explain uh, this to you later. So we wanted to perform some kind of a large scale study on how apps use this API. So we implemented a static analysis tool. And this analysis is based on uh, call graph reconstruction and data flow analysis. So as an input, we get uh, the APK of an Android app. We extract an internal, we generate an internal representation, specifically uh, suit IR. We extract some features. And uh, based on these features, we classify the app in one of the three categories I explained before, weak decryption or sign. And uh, actually, this tool is open source. You can check it out. So, so just to give you an idea of what this tool is doing, of course, all the details are in the paper. Uh, these are the different APIs are, that are involved into the fingerprint uh, functionality and uh, the features that we extract uh, about all the different APIs. So for instance, the first, time, the first thing you need to do to use this API is to generate a key. and uh, what our tool detects is if this key is a decryption key or a signing key. Then you need to lock the key. You need to, to actually specify that this key needs to be locked and can only be used uh, if the user touches the sensor. Then you need to authenticate the key. That actually means you need to basically unlock the key by having the user uh, pressing the sensor. And here you call this API and you pass as a first parameter, you pass the key you actually want to unlock. And an interesting thing is that you actually, you can also pass an null as the first parameter. In this case, no key will be unlocked. So the user will be asked to touch the sensor, but no actual key is unlocked. And finally, there is a, there is a callback. So this callback is called by the Android framework when uh, the, the, a legitimate user actually touches the sensor. And in this case, we try to identify which kind of cryptographic operation, if any, happens after the the, the fingerprint sensor has been touched. And so just to give you a, an example, if for instance we detect that, we, if for instance we might classify an app as weak if we detect that no key is actually unlocked by touching the sensor. And uh, yeah, so we run our tool on a data set of uh, 501 uh, apps. That these are apps that among a larger, a larger uh, data set, these are apps that actually declare the permission to use the fingerprint. And so the two, interesting, the two most interesting results are these, uh, that uh, like um, more than half of the applications use this API in, the, in what we define as weak, and less than 2% they use it in the sign way that is, uh, the, that is the, the strongest way they could have used it. And so, uh, Another thing we look into is uh, 
so these apps that use the APIs as, as weak, what are they doing? And by analyzing a subset of these apps, we figure out that 80% of them should have used cryptographic checks to, and should have used cryptographic checks, so they should have used the fingerprint API in, in, a, in a better way. Uh, because these apps actually, as part of the functionality, they perform, for instance, uh, remote authentication. So the security of this app would have benefited by using the fingerprint API in a stronger way. So, yeah, so just give you some idea. Of course, we, we, we wanted to um, validate these results. So, on a, uh, and here there is a problem that is a lot of these applications actually are, for instance, banking applications. So it's actually hard to run them dynamically because uh, you don't have accounts for all these banks or other financial institutions. So, but anyway, we were able to run on a subset of them. We were able to dynamically uh, run them and simulating an attacker with different capabilities and show that actually our classification was correct. And in other case, we just uh, use reverse engineering. And so uh, out in this subset, we only uh, misclassified two apps. That is around uh, 5%. And one interesting thing is actually our tool it tends to uh, classify apps in a slightly safer way than um, they actually are. So we uh, think that the results are, are even a little bit worse in terms of security. So uh, yeah, just let me just give you two examples here. So the Google Play uh, Store app, so this is the app that probably is installed in any uh, Google device at least. And it can be configured to require fingerprint touch to approve uh, purchases. For instance, if you want to uh, buy some um, music. And uh, our tool correctly say that this app is using the API in a weak way. And this is interesting because these are actually against uh, guidelines from Google that suggest that uh, you, su you should use the API in a signed way exactly to authenticate online transactions. That is what this app is doing. A similar, you know, a, a, another interesting case is we found some apps that basically they use the fingerprint API, they implement all the cryptography, but they actually forget to lock the key in the first place. So they have code to unlock a key, but the key is not locked because they didn't call the API to lock uh, the cryptographic key. And so this actually suggests, in my opinion, that the current API is, is maybe too complex, and so developers, of course, are, gonna, uh, are doing mistakes sometimes. So let me just give you an introduction. So I think the current API has definitely some weaknesses. So even assuming that the uh, um, developers are going to use it in the best possible way, in the sign way, for instance, there is no secure UI. And so this is a big, uh, this is a big issue because the user has no reliable way to know what is signed by touching the sensor. And so uh, in theory, Trazon could be used to implement secure UI and is actually used to implement secure UI for DRM purposes. But as of now, it's not used to implement a secure UI in conjunction with the, with the fingerprint uh, API, at least in uh, Google's devices. And uh, another thing that's more subtle problem is that uh, assuming that an attacker has root in the moment in which the public-private key pair is generated, so the attacker can just send to the remote backend a public key for which the attacker knows the corresponding private key. And so to mitigate this, in newest Android version, there is actually a key attestation mechanism that uh, backends can use to verify that the provided key has been generated by Trazon. However, this, as of now, not commonly used, and uh, specifically in our uh, data set from, uh, with uh, apps from downloading in February 2017, we didn't find any app actually uh, using this mechanism. So again, maybe that the API is too new, or maybe that is too complex to use it. And uh, yeah, and with this, that's the end of my talk, and I can answer to your questions. Questions? Uh, session chair priority here. So I, I have <clears throat> kind of Two questions. So one is, you, this is mostly based on um, how uh, the Pixel and the Nexus, you said that yes, was your analysis. Yes. But I'm wondering if some of these apps that you found um, were using this incorrectly is because they were relying on maybe like Samsung or some other technology and there were some sort of um, kind of hardware difference that kind of affected your analysis. Was that, was that a possibility? So uh, Samsung has its own API? 
Uh, and there are apps that try to be compatible with the different APIs. But for instance, I don't think the Samsung API uh, can be used in conjunction with cryptographic checks. So uh, that's at least my understanding. I didn't look uh, uh, deep into this. You said you had two cards. Ah, no, but someone I, I, is, I, I, is coming. Hi there. Uh, thanks for looking into this stuff. Um, you mentioned that your analysis you think is probably uh, erring on the side of claiming things are safer than they actually are. Uh, and I'm wondering if you could characterize what that is. Like, is it, is it a situation where you have apps that actually do sign and then just throw away the signature, for example? Or what's the? No. Uh, so, uh, so given both how the, the, the analysis is implemented and how the misclassifications were, I think that the tool tends to um, kind of maybe say that, for instance, one case the tool was saying this API is this app is using the the API in a signature way, but in reality was a, a, a decryption way. Uh, so, and the reason why the tool might be incorrect is because uh, basically the data flow analysis might might, might be incorrect. Uh, uh, and, and there is the more general issue that, of course, we cannot know what is the backend is actually checking. So uh, we cannot be sure. But, but uh, on a subset of this app, we were actually able to run them dynamically and, and uh, be sure about our results. OK, let's, let's thank the speaker again, everyone. So as we switch over.